in this video i'm going to be talking about some of the impact of the new guidelines that the president announced yesterday in his presidential address to nigeria so if you are interested in this conversation if you have your own contribution and your own opinion to share with me please watch till the end of this video and don't forget to drop your thoughts in the comment section below i look forward to reading from you and also please take a moment to pause this video to subscribe to join the family and if you always want to get alerts of my videos turn on post notifications for all of my videos so that said let's get started so the first thing I want to point out is Nigerian Twitter is a madhouse Nigerian Twitter is crazy it's a crazy space so if you're looking for legit information about the presidential address my advice to you is to watch the video i posted last night i have put the link in the description box or if you are on twitter or you can as well go on google to google presidential address and you will see everything there now um yesterday the president announced that um there will be um a gradual ease you know of the lockdown um in lagos ogun state and abuja from from the 4th of May, Monday 4th of May. Guys, I went on to Twitter and then the next thing I saw was one guy, Wale Adetona, and he said that if you miss the presidential address, blah, 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 and he said it was going to start from 2nd of May. And I'm asking myself that why is it that Nigerians, you watch something and you just decide to just give your own interpretation from nowhere. I mean, the president clearly announced it and mentioned it over and over again, 4th of May. And then this person is coming on Twitter to come and spread 2nd of May. And then before you knew it, everybody was trending the hashtag 2nd of May, 14 days extension. I'm like, Nigerians, come on, come on. I know that things are not really going the way we planned or the, the way we want, but then take the information as you hear it stop you know changing everything and then giving everything your own interpretation so i'm going to start from the first guideline the first guideline is that there will be an aggressive reinforcement of testing and contact tracing measures while allowing the restoration of some economic and business activities in certain sectors now um i hope that this is going to work and from my own opinion i feel like this is a very 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 imperative measure that um, the country should take because if we cast our minds back to when um covid19 um started eating up other parts of the world we noticed that the way this thing was able to come into nigeria if there's no conspiracy theory attached to this one now was um when we had um, nigerian returnees coming back and then they were advised to drop their contact details you know i heard that a lot of of them even the ncdc complained about it that a lot of them they dropped false contact information so most of those ones who were already infected with the virus without their knowledge of it they had already gone into society and they had infected a lot of other people so now that lagos is carrying out more testings we are discovering more coronavirus cases which is really really sad so um if the government is saying that the condition of the lockdown um, um to be you know suspended is to reinforce aggressive test um testing measures then i am all for it i am all for it because um i can't remember the name of that symptom but there are people now walking around with the virus without even knowing that they have the virus so i feel like if this is one step that we should take to find out more cases then i am all for it and what i want to advise everyone is please if it happens that you are going for the test and you have been advised to drop your contact details please do not lie on the form please drop the accurate contact details because um this will enable the officials to trace you to uh, monitor your health to monitor your well-being and to definitely check up on you i mean i've heard of testimonials from some people online that said that um, um when they returned they dropped the accurate contact details and they ncdc followed them like consistently you know to find out about their health and how they have been faring so um guys my advice to you is please let's comply with this particular new guideline it's for our own good and for the good of those around us um so the second one about um the nationwide measures you know for um the nationwide overnight coffee from 8 p.m to 6 a.m now the question is will this work is it a sustainable measure um, I'm going to say that it can happen on the surface, but deep down, it's going to be very, very messy. The reason I said it's going to be very, very messy 
is because Lagos is one state, Lagos especially, I can say that the overnight measure can actually definitely work in places like let's say Abuja because Abuja is a low-key um, town. Abuja is very, very low-key, very law-abiding and the population of Abuja is not like that of Lagos. Um, they don't have lots of cars on the roads like we have in Lagos. Now for Lagos, this overnight curfew thing, um, I think for the first one or two weeks or even the first one month, um, depending on how long the government is planning on extending it to, uh, and extending it to, I think it's going to be a very, very big challenge because in Lagos, the number of people that are in Lagos, the population of Lagos is mad. Like, I think Lagos makes up like, let's say one third of the population of Nigeria as a country as a whole. Now, Lagos is overcrowded. The, the mobile, um, the, the buses, the cars on the roads in Lagos, it is massive. The traffic in Lagos on a daily basis, it is massive. Like it is, it is brain racking. It can just damage someone's brain. So take for instance now, people that live on the mainland of Lagos and then they are working on the island. Trust me, on a normal day, in fact, now that there is a lockdown, if you try to take a trip between these two phases of Lagos, it will take you nothing less than 10-15 minutes. But trust me, on a regular day in Lagos, when there is no lockdown, when there is normal day-to-day -day life activities going on, the traffic in Lagos, eh? the traffic, the fact that you cannot find a bus if you do not have a private car, the fact that you cannot... Um, find a cheaper vehicle to convey you to your destination all those factors included right guys it can take you a minimum of three hours to arrive your destination in lagos just within lagos so so i'm not talking about those people that actually live in outskirts um on the outskirts of lagos like areas like ikorodu you know bega all those far areas that leads into ibadan and ogun state now imagine those people you know having their daily businesses and their daily hustles on the other side of lagos guys what i'm trying to say in general is um on the minimum it can take a lagosian Mm, at least three hours or two hours to get to their destination and guys it's a crazy deal it is a crazy deal i have lived on the mainland of lagos before so i know what i'm talking about um before the lockdown i think the two last two weeks or last three, last two weeks before the lockdown lagos was experiencing a massive lockdown on the road for commuters i mean you cannot a trip that would take you like 10 minutes it it just literally took people like five hours i was in traffic on two occasions during that period for like five hours each guys it was not funny i slept i woke up i slept i woke up it was like a, a honeymoon or each hiking trip for me it was really crazy so the question as as i asked before do i think that this overnight curfew in lagos especially it's going to work i don't think it's going to really really work in lagos yeah so what do i have to say about that what i have to say is first of all i think um organizations companies they need to consider embracing this new system you know that they have already started since the lockdown in um some part of nigeria you know um i think um digital working from home i think it's going to really really help at this point in time um we can say that for people that work at banks of course they might definitely need to be present in the banking halls to carry out their businesses their dealings and every other thing but for other businesses um i just my advice is if they can help it if they can if they can help the situation instead of going all the way out to work and then going on that long trip back home I feel like um, businesses, companies should consider, reconsider um, embracing the new technology of working from home. I think that would save people a lot of time and energy and stress of making those long trips, you know, to and through their homes. Um, for other parts of Nigeria, I do not know. I do not know, but I just feel like this um, um, suggestion that I'm giving, I'm feeling like it should be able to work for other parts of Nigeria. Another suggestion is um, if you work with um, um, a company or organization that will not allow you to work from home um, then my advice is if you have people that live close to your place of work then you can um, possibly um, crash up with them you know over the weekend do your work from Monday to Friday and then probably over the weekend you go back to your homes um, that said that is my opinion I just feel like this whole um, overnight curfew it's it's a bit dicey it might not really really work I do not think it's gonna be sustainable for places especially like Lagos I do not think it's gonna be sustainable and um, 
but then I have preferred my own suggest suggested solutions and um, since the coffee is going to be starting from like 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. I feel like um, companies that used to close by 6 p.m. in the evenings I think they should up their closing time to probably 4 p.m. that will enable the staff of the companies to you know find their way home so that they are not caught up in traffic you know from that 8 p.m. but as I said earlier from the first one two or three weeks it's gonna be very very difficult for people to adjust to it there's gonna be tons of traffic there's gonna be massive traffic so everybody please prepare your minds prepare yourselves yeah um, prepare your timing get your timing right know when you have to leave where you are know when you have to leave your homes know when you have to leave your place of business so that you can get home on time um, I think I spent a long time talking about that one because <laughs> it's actually very, very important to talk about. Okay, so um, the next uh, measure that there will be a ban on non-essential interstate passenger travel until further notice. I actually have been seeing online, somehow, somehow, people have been traveling within and around Nigeria, you know, from the airport. And I was asking myself, come on, I thought that the airports have been locked down for two weeks and then they gave another two weeks extension. But people that have private jets, they've been traveling privately, you know, within and around Nigeria. How come that's happening? And I also noticed that there are, some, there are still some airport officials at the airport that are still attending to flight passengers. So I'm asking myself, what the hell is going on? You know, so regarding that one, I do not think that is working at all. It was never working. Yeah, maybe for the public, but for some selected private people, people have been traveling in and within Nigeria. So um, I don't know if that is going to work. I think the government would just have to um, put more pressure to ensure that all of these new measures actually kick off and work. But in my own opinion, I do not think that's going to work. It might work for the general public, but then trust, you know, those people who are at the top, those people that have private jets, they will definitely be able to move around. So I don't think it's going to be like a total, you know, ban like that, like that. Um, so the C part of the measures is partial and controlled interstate movement of goods and services um yeah will be allowed from producers to consumers 100 percent. i think this should definitely kick off immediately the hunger in the land is mad though yesterday the president assured everyone that um the palliative measures are ongoing and will kick off more transparently. They have to stop for a bit because they had to put one or two things in place to ensure that um, all the relief materials got to Nigerians, you know, safely and effectively. Well, I am yet to see that, Mr. President. I have not gotten my own relief materials yet, um, except you are saying that I am not qualified to be amongst the 3.6 million household eligible to get those relief materials. But hey, I'm over here. I have not gotten it. Yes, in case you are still giving, hey, I'm still here. Um, that's by the way, guys. So, um, I think that that should kickstart immediately. And then the mandatory use of face mask or public or coverings in public, guys. I think this is one of the best ideas I have heard so far since this whole lockdown lockdown situation and trust me guys i would have actually preferred if we started enforcing the use of face masks in place of this whole lockdown thingy from the beginning for me that's what i think i think i would have preferred this one because at least you know that um face masks um are going to be made since they are made mandatory and compulsory for people to use um the government would have ensured a way of maybe um providing face masks for the entire public or any anybody you know people should just provide face masks you know enforce it it's gonna be a new fashion um you you're leaving your house just as you're wearing your trousers you're wearing your shoes your footwear you know that face mask is a compulsory accessory to complete your fashion sense so i feel like this should have started from day one from day one because um it was quite you know unavoidable or unavoidable that people would go out and then um even though there's a lot of people will not go people actually went out and so if it had been made compulsory from day one trust me i feel like this whole situation would have been able to um be better off than what we have now in nigeria because currently we have um, a total cases of over 1000 that cases are over 40 you know and Kano state is really really suffering for it the most i'm i'm getting to Kano state's part um so guys 
my advice is please we should all comply with this particular new measure it is a matter of life and death coronavirus is real people are speculating that it is not real it is all an agenda to extort money and buy our leaders from the outside world but trust me the figures are not a lie i told you guys in previous videos that on facebook that is where you're going to actually see true life stories what we are seeing on instagram twitter you know it's not really painting the picture but when you go on facebook you will definitely definitely see you know a lot of videos of people talking about how crazy the situation is so guys my advice is henceforth if you have a face mask please go ahead and wear it if you want to go out from the fourth of may as the president has said please go ahead and use your face mask if you cannot afford to buy a face mask guy there are diy videos on youtube that you can look out for on how to make um, face masks there's this particular one i saw um of people you know or someone cutting the socks and using it for a face mask i think i'm going to have to do a video on how to create your own face mask at home um it's not going to be as effective as the regular as the you know original surgical face mask but then i think it's something that's going to actually protect you if you must go out and then um which other one restrictions on social and religious gatherings guys you see this one here eh? look this is for our own good this is for our own good um a couple of weeks back um so state governors in nigeria they were saying that um, mosque should be opened because um that especially for friday jumat and i'm like do these people actually understand the implications of what they're asking for if you are saying that mosque and prayer ground should be opened do you realize that at least a hundred people are going to be gathered in one place to pray and then when they are gathered there is a hundred percent chance of someone coughing and sneezing and then it's going to definitely spread out to the entire hundred and then that's going to be another viral case of coronavirus infection you know so when people are asking for all those things you know clamoring for all these things and saying oh it is our right and all those things my take is please guys do not allow your religious beliefs do not allow religious doctrines to overcloud your sense of judgment because at this point we're not looking at who is right or who is wrong we're looking at how to keep people contain this virus that's spreading so fast and also help to sustain lives and properties i've told my mom already that madam church goa you that can go to church from 8 a.m in the morning and return in the evening by 4 p.m this is the time for you to sit your ass at home and pray to your god from at home and she has been observing that and it's been working for her so our relationship with god now is now more tighter than ever so guys i'll advise you whatever religion you belong to whatever doctrine you believe in whatever religious practices you are practicing trust me your home is the best place for you to practice it from now moving forward until further notice until we are able to contain this entire um situation currently there are softwares around that can actually help people you know to have meetings online there's zoom i have never used it but i heard that it's actually very very amazing there's facebook live there is instagram live there is um what do the other call it okay instagram live is quite public so um if you don't want it to be public then there's no need for you to use it um facebook live there's no need for you to use it if it's public but zoom is not really public zoom is not public so you can actually use zoom for you know um like a conference religious meeting you know if you must do it you know so you can as well research on google and possibly try zoom because zoom is what most schools and organizations abroad use currently so guys let's protect ourselves so that we can as well protect people around us and also guys for the situation um in kano i think the president i support the president 100 percent for the lockdown to commence in Kano with immediate effects. That was what the president said yesterday. And I support it a hundred percent. Guys, the situation in Kano is crazy. And the worst is nobody even knows what's killing people in Kano. So um, if you are in Kano, my heart goes out to you and to you and your loved ones and everybody around you. And my advice is stay indoors. Create your own face masks, as I have said, and ensure that you wash your hands, use your hand sanitizers. If you must, 
go out please do not go to crowded places as i said do not allow your religious beliefs to overcloud your sense of judgment your sense of being safe and staying healthy um i did not intend for this video to go so long and lengthy and um, that's all guys please drop your thoughts and your comments and your contributions in the comment section below i would love to know what you guys think as i have said yesterday that i was going to give you guys uh, my own opinion on the impact of this new measures announced by the president that's all i have dumped on this video so go ahead and let the comments begin i'll see you guys in my next video thanks for watching bye